Africa for the Africa. Okay, here we are at the mausoleum for the first president of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And to assist us with the tour is a friend and a brother, Mohammed. He's going to be the tour guide. Like I said, you are okay to take pictures everywhere, but inside the museum where he has his personal belongings, photography is not allowed. Let's observe protocol, and then Mohammed will take us on the tour. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. okay. Ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you are all welcome. And once again, my name is Mohammed. Uh, you see, Ghana is a secular country. Those at the back, can you hear me? Those at the back, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, so Ghana as a secular country, we have freedom of worship. We have Christians, Muslims, and the rest are adhered to traditional beliefs. Mm -hmm. But in Ghana here, traditionally, some of the ethnic groups do name their children after the days of the week. Yeah. So, for instance, I am born on Monday. So my name is Kojo. The former UN General Secretary, the late Mr. Kofi Annan, because he was born on Friday, that's why he's called Kofi. Our first president, Osajefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, was born on Saturday. That's why he's called Kwame. Yes. Yeah. So since you are in Ghana, then you can also check, take the calendar, then you check, then you give yourself eh, your Ghanaian name. Yeah. So. This is the famous site attraction in Ghana. Coming to Ghana without visiting this place, that means your coming to Ghana has been incomplete. Absolutely. You can't come here without coming here. Yeah. But good that you guys are here to make your trip to Ghana complete. It's our first stop. <laughs> so, this particular ground was established in 1991. Looking at the effort, our first president, Osadiefo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, did for Ghana and also for Africa. So when he died and gone 20 years later after his death, that the people of Ghana decided to rehabilitate his name by giving him this prestige honor. When he died, he was buried at three different places. And this place is the third and the final resting place of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. During the colonial days, this particular area used to be the British old polo grounds. A polo grounds where they were exercising their aristocracy. It is on the same ground when the independence was granted that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah stood and made the first Ghana's independence speech. That's why when he died and gone, 20 years later after his death, the same place has been converted to where his remains has been finally buried. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, we cannot talk about his biography because he has a very long one. But what we can note is that he was a great Pan-Africanist, one of the greatest advocates of unity of Africa. The day our independence was declared on this particular ground, he even made a speech that has remained famous till today. For instance, this sentence, our independence, it is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of Africa. That awareness of Pan-Africanism can also be explained by his personal journey because he was once trained as a teacher. He won a scholarship to study abroad. He studied in the US, in London. He even participated in the 5th Pan-African Congress, which was held in Manchester in 1945. Through that, he met his greatest mentor, Dr. W. E. B. Du Bois. Two years later, he returned home at the invitation of the leaders that formed the first political party. He came down and joined the elite of the first political party. But in 1948, our air servicemen, with all the who fought with the British in the World War II, with all the promises that the British made to them, when they returned. Then they were sad line. So on 28 February 1948, they decided to go and present a petition to the then governor, 
So they were just embarking on a peaceful demonstration. But when they got to the crossroad, there was one British police officer who felt so threatened at the way that the air servicemen were marching towards the Christian Borg castle. So he ordered the Ghanaian soldiers that they should prevent them from advancing. They disobeyed him and he himself pulled out a gun and shot. And three of our air servicemen died on the spot. So this thing triggered the 1948 disturbances. So 29 people lost their life. 229 people sustained serious injuries. The merchant shops were looted. Therefore, to catapult the situation from Britain, they declared a state of emergency in the then Gold Coast. So those who formed the first political party were also seen as antagonist force to the British rule. Therefore, they started picking some of them. So they picked six of them. And through that, they became so popular. So in Ghana here, we call them the Big Six. So to honor them, that's why we have their faces on our bank note. Later, it was said that the first political party, the elite, those who were in Ghana before Nkrumah returned, they were here living peacefully with the British. Until Nkrumah came down, that's when the trouble started. So finger were pointed at him that uh, is the one causing all the trouble. So it was said that you will be demoted from a position of a general secretary to a mere treasurer. And at that time, we also have these progressive action groups like the market women, the labor, and they said that they will not sit down and see him being demoted. If that be the case, they force him to quit the first political party and form his own political party. That's why his party was called Convention People's Party. So, and their slogan is self-government or independence now. But the rest were talking about gradual process. So he incited public disorder against the British. They had him arrested. He was tried and convicted three years in prison. But because of his popularity, made him being elected from prison as to go to the National Assembly. Therefore, till tomorrow, the prisoner became a prime minister. So this is how he has to now negotiate for our independence. So after the 1954, the 1956 general election, he keep on having this landslide victory. So the British were convinced that the British, that, that the people want him to lead them to independence. That's why on the eve of 6th March 1957, where we have his portrait being erected, that was the exact spot. He stood and made the first Ghana's independence speech. He became a prime minister. The Queen of Britain was still our head of state. Till 1960, when Ghana attained a republican status, he was therefore sworn in as the first president of the first republic. He ruled this country, do what he could do for us, till 1966, 24th February to be precise. He was not even in Ghana, on his way going to Hanoi on a peace mission. When he got to China, that's when he has been told that some members from his army, supported by the police, are staged a coup at his back. Therefore, for security reasons, he could not come back. He was exiled in Guinea, and he spent the rest of his life in Guinea. He was there till 1971. He was taken ill. They took him to Romania for medical treatment. Unfortunately, he died from prostate cancer at the age of 63. So his remains was flown back to Guinea. Over there, the body was embalmed and he was lying in a metal casket and he was put on a public display. Three months in Guinea. After three months, the remains was brought back to Ghana because at the time he died, his mother was then alive. Meanwhile, he was the only child and the only son for his mother. So the mother used to cry every blessed day that the remains should be brought back home. So when the remains was finally brought back, then straight it was conveyed to his hometown and kept over there close to 20 years. So after 20 years, that's when discussion came up strongly in the parliament that looking at the effort he has done for Ghana and for Africa and being the father of the nation, it would be ideal to be buried in the capital than his hometown. The same time, this place was also established and commissioned by our former president, Jerry John Rawlings, 
at the completion of this place the remains was moved down here but unfortunately the body was then decaying so that's when they decided to bury him finally he was transferred from the original casket that kept his body for 20 years into a wooden one as tradition demand and finally buried under the monument in all we said it's been buried three times and this place is the third hopeful the last resting place of dr kwami nkrumah so this is the first statue made for him when he died and gone and the first one that you was portrayed in a southern tradition his right hand and his forefinger stretching to a particular direction it's now the slogan to his own political party which is forward ever backwards never, never. Yes. and we also have the home blowers the traditional home blowers they form part of the southern tradition in the southern part of ghana when you go to the chief palace they are the praise singers so whenever there is a deba and the chief is about to appear in the public then they herald and announce his coming so they are also here announcing the legacy and the coming of dr kwami nkrumah but in a real life situation home blowers don't kneel down we don't even see them anywhere water they need to be stood up barefooted traditionally they take the lead and the chief follows but the significance of water as a source of life in the system of belief of mankind over here is just a merely a montage on the horn for brevity of style however water represent the internal life of dr kwami nkrumah though he's dead we still believe he's still alive that's why the young pioneers from his own political party said nkrumah never dies because he's dead his legacy still lives on so over here it is an internal homage that they are paying to dr kwami nkrumah and far ahead we also have the drama and the one also in a smoke with a traditional guitar these are culture we have in ghana the south and the north in the southern part during the olden days in the southern part our forefathers used drums as a means of communication that we call talking drums so bringing those two culture together to symbolize unity that make this country one so before we move to the other side for some pictures let me take the opportunity to also talk about the monument then we just move to the other side when you take a good look at the shape of the monument it symbolizes the life and the works of our first president <coughs> at the beginning of his political career he was talking about a political unification of africa and as such that he also initiated a seven years development plan for ghana that saw the building of the volta river dam which was constructed on the largest man-made lake in the whole world in terms of size maybe it will take his entire life to achieve more for us but unfortunately his government was ousted in 1966 so that's the unfinished work that's the truncated vision but when you bring it in this part of our world it looks like a trunk of a tree so it is like those trees when our farmers after their hard day works when they return they sit under it and we call it a gossip tree <laughs> so nkrumah never dies but he's resting under a tree but the tree is truncated here just to show the disappointment in his achievement and the black star also represent the hope of black people all over the world and the inspiration came from dr Marcus Garvey. You know Dr. Marcus Garvey? Well, I know, Garvey I know Marcus to... Garvey, wasn't it? Uh, doctor. Dr. Marcus Garvey? No, Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. We say, we That's say honorable. Honorable. Oh, okay. Yeah, honorable Marcus Garvey. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so, you know, he wanted to bring back all the blacks eh, to Africa. And the ship he wanted to use for that project was called the Blaster Line. Yeah, though he himself could not put his feet on the African soil, but when he died there was this kind of movement eh, from the diaspora coming to africa and the then gold coast the present ghana and eh, that also happens to be the modern colony that open is welcoming people coming from the diaspora so when dr marcus gave died in 1940 in london six years later his wife jack amigave visited the then gold coast then 11 years later 
the famous jazz musician Louis Armstrong also came to the then Gold Coast. And when he arrived, there was a large crowd that welcomed him in Ghana. And he claimed that the crowd that he saw in Ghana, he has not seen it in his entire life before. Yes, and at that time, you also have a particular music, which was called the Hard Life music. And Hard Life music preceded during and after our independence. And there was a song sung by the king of Hard Life called Inokte Tebensa. And the song can be sung like this. All for you, Chichi, all for you. All for you, Chichi, all for you. Are they with you, Papa? Are they with you, Mama? I don't wait you, Papa, oh, all for you, all for you, Titi, all for you. So when Louis Armstrong came to Ghana, the name Titi was changed to all for you, Louis, all for you, because he was welcomed by 13 different orchestra band when he performed before our prime minister at the Blaster Square, and later he became our first president. Now, the day our independence was declared on this ground, we also have the presence of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Jesse Jackson. They were here. Jesse, Jesse. <laughs> and in the 60s, we also have Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, who also moved to Ghana. Uh, unfortunately, died and buried in Ghana here. In 64, we have the presence of Malcolm X, Stokey Carmichael, Maya Angelou, Muhammad Ali. So the Pan Africanism of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah did not only stretch our relation with the diaspora, but also inspire the rest of the African countries. That's why some of the African leaders, like the ex-president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia, Kamuzu Banda of Malawi, they also came and studied in Ghana here. When they moved back to their various country, then they became famous people because of the event that took place on this particular ground. That's why earlier when I said this is the famous site attraction in Ghana. Any questions? Yes, he did. We will come to that. Okay, so if there's no question, then let's move to where the statue and take some two pictures there before we... Thank you.